Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. This may look like any new home, but it, it has a very special meaning for one local veteran. Our veterans often live with disabilities because of their time served, and our reporter Molly Casey was there as a vet got the keys to a home made especially for him. Molly, tell us about this great story. Cornelius, this new home was built by the organization called Homes for Our Troops. It's built to listen to his needs and commands, but it's his will to serve others that makes him unstoppable. What we do in the military is extremely dangerous. For Master Sergeant Eric Martz, coming home has a bigger meaning. In 2006, he was hit by an IED blast while serving in Iraq. He lost his vision because of it, but he kept fighting. Just because I'm without eyesight, I'm not without vision. Martz learned to navigate the world around him by sound and touch, but didn't have a home adapted to his needs, a problem he no longer faces. Welcome home. Homes for Our Troops custom built this house for Martz. It has voice and touch activated technology to guide him around the home, performs various functions, and is mortgage free. What we thought might have been a perfect home before, now well, we've got the perfect home right now. Now we do. Many local and national organizations pitched in to make this house a reality. A reality Mart's wife, Bobby, still can't believe. It's almost surreal. It, you don't, it's, um, I still keep pinching myself. But Mart's doesn't take this in stride. He actively volunteers with veterans organizations and says he'll never stop serving his country. I will serve and making a difference in everybody's lives. Master Sergeant Mark will be moving into his new home soon, and he says he can't be more thankful for the support of Homes for Our Troops. You know, we wish there were more organizations doing great things like that because, like, I mean, we have a new generation of vets who served in Iraq and uh, all those places in the, in the Middle East who have these disabilities. It's true. It's honestly, this organization was amazing. There are so many different people that were a part of today that gave to today. And it, it can be done by anyone. It only takes you to either go and volunteer with these organizations or to pitch in just a little bit of money every month to make sure that these people do get the services that they need. Thanks so much for that story, Molly. Several students at the Salon Professional Academy in Fargo say they are worried about their safety after they say one of their classmates threatened to shoot up the school. In a Facebook post by Irina Smith, she writes the incident happened on Wednesday and presumably everyone thought the woman wouldn't be back in class, but to their surprise, she was there this morning. The Academy owner tells us this incident happened because a student lost her financial aid and was upset at the time. She said the police were called, they interviewed the student, and according to the Academy owner, determined the student was not a threat to any of her classmates. We asked Fargo police to see the report filed on the incident, but have not heard back from the department yet. A scary situation for one Grand Forks resident last night when a burglar broke into her home while she was there. The woman woke up to a loud noise in her home on South 9th Street, yelled at the suspected thief, and called police. Once they arrived, officers saw that the door had been forced open. They checked the house and didn't find anyone, and they believe the person who broke in ran off once they realized someone was home. If, if you have any information on that crime, you are urged to contact the Grand Forks Police Department. The weather on this Saturday has been gorgeous. Justin, what's in store for the rest of the weekend? And thank you, Cornelius, and good evening, everybody. Yeah, really nice summer day out there. Temperatures not that bad. We got plenty of sunshine. Most of us seeing highs in the lower 80s, and temperatures have dropped a, a couple of degrees since our high temperatures. We're into the upper 70s in most places. Devil's Lake, the warm spot at 81 degrees. And most of us are seeing mostly sunny skies, but some clouds are developing ahead of a dry cold front, especially into the James River Valley and getting into uh, portions of of the Southern Valley and everybody is staying dry as of now. Not a lot of moisture with this front. You're seeing uh, some rain showers just north of Winnipeg. That's basically it for the moisture. We will see the increase in the clouds as we go through later on in the evening as temperatures will stay warm, mainly into the 70s. We'll take a look at the week ahead and the eclipse forecast coming up later in the newscast. Sounds good, Justin. Well, the perfect weather made a move in day over at NDSU pretty easy for those families. New students from all over the area checked into their new homes today. Unpacking was the first order of business, but as you see there, some of them were even starting to decorate their new home away from home. And while the new students are excited, it's a tough and interesting time for parents. 
One mother shares how she's feeling, which is pretty much sums up how many parents feel. It's scary, but it's also satisfying knowing that he is ready to branch out on his own. I know he can do it. Well, I hope he fits in well and meets some new people and does well in his classes and works hard and, and has some fun too. Now, while the school officially welcomed the students today, I'm told there's a going to be a welcoming party tonight right across the street from campus. Some of the same things were happening up in Grand Forks today at UND. These photos on the school's Facebook page show parents and new students smiling for the camera. And just like at NDSU, in between those photos, I'm sure there were some tears. At Pioneer Days at Bonanzaville in West Fargo, it started this morning with people getting to see pieces of local history, old houses and buildings that belong to the movers and shakers of their time, some of them who helped make our area what it is today. Now, if you want to check it out, you can go tomorrow. It starts at 9 a.m. and goes until around 3.30. And if you're looking for something to do tonight, take a quick trip down and over to Savin. They're having their annual Harvest Days Festival, and this is from today, where people were out and about enjoying all the things a small town has to offer. It's only seven miles from Moorhead, and it's a great place to be. Lots of nice people, lots of things to do, and a great dance tonight. There was a great band last night, The Misadventures, and it'll, it'll just brighten your day to be out here with all the people. Now, as you heard, the party is not over at Harvest Days. There's a big dance tonight, and I've been told to tell you it's going to be an event that you do not want to miss. One girl was granted a very special wish today in downtown Fargo when she got her own art show. 11-year-old Logan from Harwood has cystic fibrosis and went through Make-A-Wish Foundation to get her art on display. The room was packed with people wishing Logan well and buying some of her pieces that caught their eyes. She says that the response from the community means so much to her. For more on this story, make sure you tune in tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10 and over on the CW at 9 o'clock. Later on Valley News Live at 6, how dueling rallies in Boston remain peaceful. And we were seasonably warm today. A high temperature into the lower 80s. We're going to see more of the same for Sunday. And then clouds and rain just in time for the eclipse. We'll have the details coming up next.